Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin Es-salatu vesselamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Respected brothers and sisters Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullah As you know we have Islamic exhibition on the first floor of this building and we have groups coming mainly non-Muslims but we also have coming Muslims and new Muslims and they pose a question and they ask me as to what sect I belong to. And I tell them that, look, there are no sects in Islam. So they say, well, you know, I'm asking whether you are a Brelvi or a Diobandi or Elhadis or Salafi or whether you're a Hanafi or Shafi or Maliki. They ask me. And so I tell them that, look, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as well as all the other prophets mentioned in the Holy Quran, preached only Islam. And indeed, we are told in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 19, in Nadina, in the Lahil Islam. Indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. And the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and may Allah be pleased with them, call themselves only Muslims. And therefore, if you go any further than that, then you are giving rise to sectarianism. And indeed, the Holy Quran tells us in, again, Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 6, 7, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُدِّيُمْ وَلَا نَسْرَائِيُمْ وَلَا كِنَّا كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian, but he was true in faith and bowed his will to Allah as Muslim. So, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, he also proclaimed to be a Muslim as well as all the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Holy Quran, again and again, we are reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala tafarrahu, wala tafarrahu, wala tafarrahu. Don't be divided, don't be divided, don't be divided. And in uh, chapter 6, Surah Al Imran, Verse 159, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Holy Prophet, Inna lazina farrakhu dinahum wa kanu shi'an lasta minhum fi shay. As for those who divide their religion and break up into sects, you, O Prophet, have nothing to do with them. It's a stern warning to those who divide the religion of Islam, who divide themselves into sects. And sometimes, you know, they ask, they say that, you know, if you go to so-and-so masjid, then you, your salah won't be accepted. Well, it's amazing because uh, the Holy Prophet tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the entire earth as a place of, place of worship, as a place of sujood for him. So what, on what basis can you say that if you go to such and such masjid, then your salah won't be accepted? This is not the case. However, there is an uh, exception, and that exception is mentioned in the Holy Quran. We read in Surah Al Tawbah, Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 107, Wallazina takhazu masidun dararum wa kufran wa tafrikhan ban al mu'minin. And there are those who put up a mosque by way of mischief and infidelity to disunite the believers. In the times of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Munafakins, they built a masjid in the outskirts of Medina. And it was called Masjid al-Darrar. Darrar means harm. It was a masjid of harm. Because it was built with the intention of dividing the Muslims. And the Holy Prophet was commanded to have it destroyed. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, had that masjid destroyed. So can you imagine the last and final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a masjid destroyed. Because it was built with the intention of creating division and disunity amongst the Muslim. 
So we have a lesson that if any masjid is built with the intention of dividing the Muslims and disuniting the Muslims, then it's worthy of being destroyed. In Surah Bani Israel, chapter 17, verse 84, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Fulkulnu yamalo ala shakilatahi. Everyone, the Prophet is made to say, acts according to his mold and disposition. So, what is shakila? Shakila is mold, it's a mold with which we are born. So, this mold refers to our genetic inherited genetically inherited characteristics that with which we are born. And it has two components, shakila. The other is what we acquire from training, indoctrination, and the company that we keep. And together with taqlid, taqlid is blind belief and blindly following the people who teach us or who are around us. And then we become so set in this mold and disposition, we become so set in our ways that we do not question in what we do. And this is something we ought to do. For example, Alhamdulillah, you know, our father was a Muslim, so mother was a Muslim, and so by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are born Muslim. But that only makes us a nominal Muslim. So in order to have a firm faith, in order to have depth of Iman, we have to rediscover Islam ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, and indeed we have to teach our children once we have rediscovered Islam as to why am I a Muslim? Why am I not a Jew? Why am I not a Christian? Why am I not a Buddhist? Why am I not an atheist? Why am I not a polytheist? And we have to question because the Holy Quran tells us. The Holy Quran, in fact, gives a lot of explanation. And again and again, it reminds us and draws a comparison between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and polytheists, the mushriks, and atheists again and again, so that we may ponder over, because the Holy Quran again reminds us not to just read it, but to ponder over the message of the of the Quran, which comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Angel Jibrail and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this is very important. And so we have to get out of this mold that we have we are set in and question ourselves. What am I and why I am what I am? And draw a comparison to give ourselves certainty in the belief that we hold. And if we do so, if we ponder over, then it will inshallah strengthen our faith. This question of unity of Muslims arises again and again, or rather the disunity of Muslims. So how do we overcome this problem? Because we know that uh, all around us we see people who call themselves either a Deobandi or a Brailvi or Alidis or Salafi or Hanafi or Shafi or Malaki or whatever. But the Quran tells us that all the prophets peace be upon him, they preached only Islam, and they call themselves only Muslims. The companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and may Allah be pleased with them, they call themselves only Muslim. So why should we go any further? So for ordinary people like myself, we should resort to simply calling ourselves Muslims and go no further. This will bring about unity. And as far as our Ulmas and scholars are concerned, I tell them that they should broaden the perimeters and circumference of Islam. For Islam is big enough 
to accommodate various shades of understanding. And in any case, their interpretations and understanding has to be within the framework of the teaching of Islam. So why should they then themselves give rise to this type of sectarianism? And I also tell them to please refrain from calling, as they sometimes do, refrain from calling each other's kafir. May Allah SWT guide us. May he grant us firm faith and may he grant us depth of iman, inshallah. Wa akhiru dhamana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.